Hey everyone, this is Michael Asgore. I'm going to talk today about breaking the painting process into four major steps, and I'll relate why this is a helpful strategy and give you some suggestions which I share with our members to help them be productive in the studio and make consistently strong paintings. I'm gonna use my own work at different stages to illustrate these concepts, and hopefully you can take what you can and apply it to your work. I like to start the painting off with abstract underpainting, in this case, I've limited the paint to these cool colors, and I've used acrylic paint in thick and thin applications. I use just the medium of clear gesso, which is actually a primer, not a medium, but it has great consistency and tooth, and it's very stable for anything that comes on top of it. So I aim to keep it to simple, strong, abstract shapes that start to create some interest, possibly some conflicts, maybe some nice backgrounds, and even some applications that can stand on their own in the finished painting. Here's the painting Journey Together, finished. And notice there's still some of the underpainting in the finished piece. After you've applied your underpainting, and let's say you're working from a reference of some sort, it's a good time to move on to start laying in the features of your composition, namely the subjects and environments, if those are part of it, uh, as big shapes. With this piece, I mentally grouped together all the shadows on the wall and the ground and decided to apply a medium dark color to all of those areas, focusing on creating interesting shapes, edges, and a variety of paint application. The goal with this step is to have something that is not detailed enough, but very fresh, exciting, and compositionally strong that gives you a lot to work with. And here's the finished painting constructing the girl in the lavender dress. Moving on to the painting third generation with its underpainting completed in step one. And here's the photo reference. And here's the painting further along once big shapes have been applied in step two. And here's the painting further along still. In step three, unification and separation, we're basically using color, value, edges, shapes, paint application, etc., to unify different areas of the composition and at the same time create separations. In my process, this is a lengthy process where I spend multiple sittings developing the painting. So color is a big unifier. We have this green that's covering most of the painting, unifying those areas. I'll often think about bringing colors of dominant features like the sky into other areas of the painting. So there's some blue in the trees and the figures, etc., and that'll create a connection. Same goes with the red of the castle, which is used in other areas to create harmony. And here's the finished painting. In the final phase, which is step four, we focus on details and harmony. In the photo reference of this piece, there's a lot of detail that I can draw upon, but I don't need to include it all. And I see this a lot with my students' work. There are features in the photo which they feel they're obliged to include. And if it doesn't help the concept or the composition, it can really go. For example, I've removed the walking couple to the left because the spacing was awkward and I felt it would be stronger of a composition with open space there. A few of the details I would like to focus on are the main figure, uh, the faces proportioned incorrectly, um, I would like to focus on the shape and, of the bike in perspective, uh, including the flag, including some more architectural features, and certainly a connection between the arcade on the right and the imagery to the left of it. Here's the finished painting calibration. Some accents of color had been added to give it vitality, and that's a great way to strengthen a piece in the last phase of the painting process. Uh, because you already know what the color pattern is and can really push some saturated colors to give impact. And here's the painting at its uh, permanent location at Stanford University. Thanks so much for sticking around. I'll see you next time.